they know all films are not going to work. So they're, but they're, they're playing the long game of making multiple films over the course of a year and that they know that the winners will pay for the losers. Why is your advice to filmmakers to not make movies for money? Well, so it depends on the level of investment of a film and what, you know, what my advice changes film to film for sure and filmmaker to filmmaker depending on their goals and what they're doing. So if you want to make, if your passion is to make a film about growing mushrooms and you want to spend an hour and a half just watching the mushrooms grow, you know, you shouldn't tell an investor you need $150,000 to shoot that movie and it'll get on Netflix for sure, right? But if you can go out and do it for your own pocket change and you can do it on your iPhone and then you can put it in an art museum, okay, great. That's your passion that you, and you had to found an interesting way to film those mushrooms, right? Um, the point there is, I guess, that um, if you make something low budget and because it's your, and it's your passion and everybody knows the high risk of whatever you're spending, um, then great. Uh, everybody's going in eyes wide open. Um, but ultimately, most films just monetarily fail, overwhelmingly fail. Um, and that's not because of distributors being crooked, although there's a little of that in places. It's not because they spend too much money advertising or put it in their pockets or have exorbitant deals. It's because there's overwhelming amount of content out there for consumers to consume and just no way to monetize every independent film that everybody makes in, in, in a way that makes sense vis-a-vis -vis the budget. Um, I, I'm in the position of seeing the, the results for, you know, intimately of over a thousand films in 25 years and overwhelmingly the most films fail. That's just, that's just the reality of the marketplace. If you look at, not to name names, but if you look at a decent art house distributor, one of the ones that distributes 20 to 25 films a year and has a prominent brand um, and well thought of and everybody wants to be with, if you look at their box office for each of the films that year, there are a couple that get over a million dollars and there's about 20 that make 200 to a few thousand dollars and they've spent money to try to make those films into something and it just didn't work, right? So, um, that's why everyone should approach filmmaking as the business with a huge amount of caution because it's 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 better to put your film in a mutual your money in a mutual mon sorry your money in a mutual fund right it's not a, a film is not a great investment um, um, and so you know if you are making a film for in the two to three million dollar range there are ways to go about it without just taking someone's cash and blowing it that to amortize the risk um, or to minimize the risk. Um, you can shoot in an estate with a tax credit, like to take care of 25 or 30% of the budget. So narrowing how much the person has to spend in cash on the film. There's getting uh, involved with a international sales agent and getting cast that they can sell the film on to, to pre-sell the film so that you can take those contracts and, ca and get cash for those from a bank in order to squeeze down the, the amount of equity you have to spend. So there are ways to minimize it so that you've, let's say you've made a $2 million film and you've now all you need in equity is 25% of the budget. You know, you're making a $2 million film essentially for uh, half a million dollars. Now, hopefully with the name that you've got and the quality of the film you made, when you're, when it's done, you'll be able to present to the territories you didn't pre-sell and get numbers that are bigger than that half a million, but you're still risking that half a million dollars. Um, if it turns out badly, it's gone. And there's just only so many films a year that distributors who can pay a million dollars plus for a film are gonna buy. Um, like I said, there's like 10,000 films made a year. And you know, big, you know, the biggest distributors that actually take on indie films only want a couple of them. Um, 
you know, companies, you know, a little, a little lower down want 20 to 25. The ones who are doing, you know, real theatrical films a year. Um, there's some that want 10 to 20. Um, and then there are, there's a, you know, a good number of, I would call kind of mostly all rights dis, uh, digital distributors who sometimes do theatrical as well, but most of them aren't paying a lot of money for films. So, you know, when, when you're looking at the film as a business, you have to realize it's hardly even a business. It's practically throwing money away. Um, and the thing that studios and, and bigger distributors know is that not they know all films are not going to work. So they're but they're they're playing the long game of making multiple films over the course of a year, and that they know that the winners will pay for the losers over time. As an independent filmmaker, one making one movie, you're taking one shot, and um, that makes it even a higher risk. Well, going back to the argument of you know don't try to make money from the film. There's, it seems like it's in, an interesting thing in that do you make it for the market and try to try to cash in on it or do you make it based on something you're really passionate about but then is it going to be marketable? Yeah. That's tough. I think you have, you have to look to the individual and their soul and what they're about at the end of the day, right? And there are some people that have, it's, they have it all. They have the, the talent they have something they're very passionate about that that is, a, you know, let's say it's a dramatic story that isn't a thriller or horror or family film. It's not obviously commercial, but they've just really, they've written it well. People are responding to on the page. Actors are responding to on the page. Financiers are responding to on the page. And then it all comes together and it becomes this great thing that does well. It sells to Netflix or sells to a big company. Um, that can happen, but those are very rare occurrences. Um, so uh, I think all filmmakers have to kind of juggle that stuff. Some people also inherently have commercial sensibilities and they grew up loving Spielberg and, and, uh, and Ron Howard and, people, and who, people who had commercial sensibilities. And they, tell, they just kind of instinctively tell commercial stories. Um, There's some people that don't. They go, you know, they're more uh, Fellini fans or Truffaut or someone like, and, and that's what the way they see the world, but they, you know, and probably having those influences is going to make the way they tell stories a little different. Um, and so that has to be kind of brought into the mix of like, how does this, how does this talent converge with what's commercial? I don't think it's ever really good, you know, to make a movie because, well, it's the right genre. And we've got the right name, but the talent, the director's okay, and the screenplay's okay, right? That's, you know, okay, maybe they'll trade dollars because they could pre-sell the movie and get some money based on the name, and it gets an okay deal, but it's probably just trading dollars at the end of the day. It's probably not going to, the film's probably not going to lift beyond that. I think there, you have to take into consideration kind of everything, um, in this business when you're making a film. Again, depending on the budget. Again, if you're going out and spending $10,000 on your little movie, go crazy, right? Like you're, you're only risking your own $10,000. Um, and there are there are lots of people doing that. And that's, that's fine, right? As long as you understand that like you're probably not getting a $100,000 HBO deal out of that. So cursed are the ones that want to do a movie on shiitake mushrooms with organic soil and 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 but you never know only, if it's just the greatest only, mushroom yeah document. only cursed <laughs> if they think that they're gonna get a netflix deal out of it right okay if it's if it's okay that they make it and show it in an art museum perfectly legitimate right there's an audience there there are people that like avant-garde interesting experimental things but you don't see that stuff on the major streamers you don't see you know, even, you know, IFC, Magnolia, A24, they're not picking up, you know, avant-garde stuff or just even, or weird stuff. I mean, if you look at most of their slates, it's fairly commercial stuff, even though it's, you know, high, you know, highbrow and has interesting filmmakers. They, a lot of them, you know, you look at genre, you know, a lot, of, a lot of those films are thrillers and horror films. They're just elevated in some way, right? A good portion of them. 
Um, none of those guys are doing like you know 25 dramas a year. Um, the mar the market wouldn't bear it for them. It wouldn't work. Yeah, I don't know why this keeps coming into my my mind right now, but Searching for Sugar Man, which was such an excellent film. I know some people were critical of it. I loved it. But it was able to sort of transcend. I mean, it it, it won an Academy Award, correct? Or, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And and so here here's a story that seems kind of unlikely, and it was just so beautifully told, and the, the main character yeah. was so fascinating. And there are anomalies. Right, so this is like, but you just don't build a business, which is each film is almost a business at a certain budget level, right? Um, you can't you can't build a business based on an anomaly, right? You have to you you should you should look at genre, you should look at cast, you should look at those things depending on what your budget level is. Um, there are certain budget levels you can't afford cast, right? You can't afford names that will work on your film. Um, you know, unless your uncle is Tom Cruise, you know, like then, then you know, you're you're most likely not casting someone that that helps prop up the movie. So um, I think uh, you have to factor in cast and genre and your budget. Um, you know, in addition, something I don't think enough people do is vet their screenplay. You know, with get a hundred people to read it. You know. Get script services to read it. Get feedback. Um, there's so many so many films that I have to turn down that I think, wow, it's really well shot and and the acting's competent, but there's just no story here, or there's just not enough of a story, or they didn't get the story fast enough. You know, there's certain kind of rules of screenwriting you, you know you kind of have to follow in order to make a you know a commercial movie. 